You are now listening to The Beat Basement, Season 4, Episode 9. Like the lo-fi quality comes from like sampling from records a lot of the time. And it's like the fact that it's uh, like you hear all these like really high quality mixes. Presents The Beat Basement, where you hear from your livest producers, all of them. And this is where it all goes down, where you hear the funky sounds. From the producers that's up and coming to Grammy Award winning, all of them. And I'm your host, Swish, and we going in. Everything going in. Well, on this episode, we have a talented um, brother, man. He's um, Helen from New Jersey. And he got the dopest lo-fi beats, man. On this episode, we have Just Jerry Beats. What's up, bro? What's going on, everybody? How we doing? All right. Hanging in there, man. How you been making it? (laughs) Been doing good. Like you said, staying quarantined. You know, just kicking it, making beats. Been working. Dope. Exactly. So tell the listeners a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so, uh, as you said already a little bit, I'm from New Jersey, uh, not too far from the city. Uh, I've been making beats for not that long, actually, probably about a year, maybe a year and a half-ish, like, messing around, you know? And then started taking it a little more seriously, like, this past, like, six months, and, like, trying to, like, actually get into it. And uh, always been, like, an avid, like, listener of, uh, just, like, hip-hop and uh, rock and stuff, like, especially back in the day. And then get more into, like, obviously soul music, because I, I love sampling soul, like, flipping soul music. It's fun. But, uh, yeah, just been messing around for now, trying to uh, keep grinding it out, you know? That's what's up, man. What? So your love for music just basically made you just say, you know what, this is what I want to do. Yeah, exactly. So when I was younger, actually, I started messing around with the drums. I had like a little, I had a kit and I, I like played basically like the snare for the school, uh, just like drum line type of stuff. And I did that for like maybe two years. And uh, just like, this was when I was just getting into middle school-ish, so I had to be like 12 maybe, and uh, just like put it down after and like never got back to it. And uh, I'm kind of like, I wish I'd stuck with it back then and just kept like grinding through it, but you know, that's how it goes when you're young, you know? Yeah. And uh, but put it down, like like I said, always listen to music. I was always into like, big fan of like Cudi and Kanye, especially like Cudi when he dropped like Man on the Moon. Like, that was, like, one of my favorite projects of all time, so. That's what's up. Yeah. That's what's up, man. Um, is that your name that you go by, just Jared Beats, or? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, my name's Jared, and, like, I was literally, like, trying to brainstorm names for a minute, and I was like, I literally can't think of anything. Like, my name's just Jared, and I was like, <laughs> no, like, I'm, I'm going to just use that name. And, uh. Like, I, I, I looked it up, and there was, like, a kind of a big, like, branded company, but I was like, yeah, it's, like, whatever. You know, like like I said, that's my name. I'm, I'm going to stick with it. So, uh, see how it goes. Yeah. That's all right. Yeah, just John Beats. What made yeah. you get into the side of music creating, like, you know? So, like I said, listening to, uh, like, Cody and Kanye, like, especially Kanye with his, like, crazy production style and whatnot, and then, like, digging a little deeper and seeing, like, oh, who's, like, making these beats? Like, what are they sampling? And then, obviously, uh, starting to get into, like, lo-fi music. Like, I started, or not even, like, lo-fi, but, like, that type of style yeah. of uh, not as, like, mainstream or, like, high quality. Like, and you start getting into, like, Dilla, Madlib, and, like, all those guys. And, like, the uh, like the people from, like, Low End Theory, like, Mind Sign and Flying Lotus and... Uh, like, you know, all those people out in the West Coast making just, like, those crazy, like, really percussion-driven groove beats, like, I feel like almost like house-ish beats. Yeah. And uh, so, like, I was listening to all that that type of stuff, too, just, like, in, in more, like, college, I would say, I was listening to that type of stuff. 
just like a lot of instrumental type of music. Yeah. And that kind of, I was like, oh, maybe, maybe I can actually like make these type of beats. You know what I mean? Like, I, I really like listening to a lot of music. So it kind of makes sense to be like a sampler and like coming across, obviously, like I said, Dilla. Dilla is definitely like one of the biggest inspirations. And I mean, he's a big inspiration to like all hip hop producers, but uh, just like listening to the Donuts tape and realizing that like you can put together something like that made me realize that there's like true meaning behind just instrumental projects and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's dope, man. That's dope. Let let people know what lo-fi um, beat making, producing is, man. Yeah, so to me, at least, lo-fi means, like, music that isn't of, like, good sound quality, almost. And it's not, like, the, the producer. <laughs> like, crazy. it's, like, exactly what it sounds like. It sounds so, you know, just melodic and just so good. I don't know. I can't describe it, man. Yeah, so, so that's what I was about to say. I feel like the lo-fi quality comes from, like, sampling from records a lot of the time. And it's, like, the fact that it's, uh, like, you hear all these, like, really high-quality mixes. Can you but, oh, yeah, you get, get... everything? Can you sample all types of music and, and lo-fi? Yeah, I love, I love sampling, like, a little bit of everything. Yeah, <laughs> I just, I really only show, like, the soul stuff, yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, like I got, I'm actually planning on putting out like some, some jazz sample stuff I've been like stashing away, like, but yeah, definitely I could, I could show you some stuff actually after, but, um, yeah, I definitely like sampling and like kind of sounds weird, but, like heavy metal stuff. I actually like sampling a lot. I like, like those like really heavy guitar riffs, like, I, yeah, those, those, those like kind of like punk stuff. Like I, I really like. I'm, a, I'm a big fan of like Nirvana and stuff. Like that's kind of what turned me on to like the rock music. Uh, again, like another big. I feel like a lot, a lot of like influence just comes from like looking up like big names and then like seeing who their influences were and like digging deeper and deeper and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, it's always, it's always like fun to uh, sample to, to pull from a lot of like source material when you're sampling, you know, and. Uh, I said I've just been posting all these like soul inspired things for right now, but I definitely would like to delve into like some other type of uh, samples eventually. Just kind of wait until I get get a little more comfortable and have a little more stashed away with them. Right. Yeah. Right. Definitely. What kind of um, software or equipment do you use? Do you like to use? So basically, I make most of my beats in machine, and then I'll bounce them from machine to uh, either like FL or Ableton, and, and work in there. Because I, I like to. So like originally, I, I first started out in FL. I feel like so many people start out in FL. It's just like you like click in the stuff. It's so like nice and simple, you know. And um, I did that for like a little bit, and then like when I started taking it more seriously, I was like like FL wasn't really doing it for me especially like like I said being a drummer and stuff like I I really liked the feel of like hitting the pads and whatnot yeah, yeah. and um so getting the, the the machine was definitely a big a big upgrade I, I felt like in a big like step in the right direction and also like because it was somewhat of an investment it made me like all right I gotta like really do this like every day you know what I mean <laughs> and uh so I got I got that and then used it for like quite a bit and um would would like bounce like i guess i would make the beat in machine but like machine isn't great at arranging i don't know if you've ever gotten to use it before yeah. but um it's very like hard to structure stuff like the right way and like actually see everything like how it's going to be arranged so i like to bounce it out to fl so this way i can like actually see and like see the arrangement and add little things where i need to and do like better uh just like automation and stuff is also better than yeah. like FL. But um, another thing was, especially being like a sampler, like I like to use, like how I said I use Ableton too. Like I like to use the different like pit, like pitch functions and like deep tuning and like the time stretching and stuff is like, it, especially in Ableton, it's crazy. So like you, you can really like manipulate your samples and like try to make the sample do what you want it to do. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's crazy how every producer has their, you know, their certain softwares that they go to, you know what I'm saying, that they can just, you know, walk through or manage through, man. 
just no, hundred percent. Everybody has their thing, you know. It's a story about hip hop that um, changed your life, or that you experienced it's about music that you never, you know, forget. Um, a big like turning point where I, it was like more about like feeling the music than just like uh, list like. Then just like listen, hearing, hearing the music versus listening to the music, I guess is how I'd put it. Like, when you're just hearing the music, like, or when you're just listening, rather, like, it's just kind of coming to your ears and like bouncing off. You're not really paying attention. Yeah. When you're hearing the music, like, you're, you, you hear what the people are saying and like, it makes sense to you. You start like feeling something because you're, you're hearing it. You're not just like being like a, a like a listener. You know what I mean? It sounds weird, but, um, so I went to a concert, and uh, the group was Brockhampton. I don't know if you've ever heard of them, but um, it's more of like a, it's it, it's like a, I don't even know how many members they have. It's like a 15 member group, like like it's like a big group, basically, just a whole bunch of like dudes, and they and they like a whole bunch of rappers, kind of like Odd Future almost. But uh, they started in 2017, and I went to go see them perform. And uh, it was about like a 500 person venue. And I was like super hyped to see him. It was like one of the first concerts though that I was going to by myself. Like I wasn't really going with like a bunch of my friends because like no one knew them. So no one really wanted to see them. You know what I mean? Right. And uh, so like, I wasn't like, I feel like it was because I went by myself. Like I wasn't like paying attention to my friends and stuff, like going and having a drink or like whatever. I was just like hearing the music, like, hearing and like feeling the whole concert and like ever since i went to that concert i was just like i need to go to like every everybody's concert i need to see everybody it's a whole and like i needed to start like listening to so much more music and just like i said like trying to hear the music and like going back and listening to stuff that i like used to listen to and being like oh like now i get it like i i understand you know what i mean right and it was like this, this aha moment of seeing i feel like it was seeing the live performance yeah. And like I said, like not having like real distractions, like making that connection like in person right. was like really cool. Now it's yeah. the cook up. It's time for the cook up. you see something that is not right, not fair, not just, you have the moral obligation to do something about it. R.I.P. John Lewis. Yeah, man. If you see something that just, you know, rub you the wrong way and you know it's not right, you know it's not fair, you know it's not, you know it's not just, you have that obligation to do something, say something, speak up, man, for what is right. That's my word, y'all. Blessings on blessings on blessings. Peace.